your bread and butter is all things customer data. Your bread and butter is all things protecting Fortune 100 companies such as the 12 largest US banks and the users there. Just how easy is this to do? Just how worried should we be that an institution as large as Robin Hood is unable to protect people in this way? Well, I, I certainly think that um, there's a, there should be a lot of concern. Uh, the reality is, is that if we look at um, customer access specifically, um, it has lagged far behind uh, the rest of digital transformation. Um, a friend of mine said once, you know, that the challenge is, is that everything has gone digital except for identity. It's almost like we've uh, built this incredible home with all of these amazing features and we forgot to put doors on it, um, which is unfortunate because the focus hasn't been on providing security uh, for people at a personal level. It's been provided uh, or it's been focused on ease of access and uh, the ability to transact. And if it's easy for a customer to transact, unfortunately, as we see, it's also easy for a bad guy to transact. I am curious, Richard, in our story yesterday, there were some anecdotes of people who thought about switching their accounts from a Robinhood to perhaps maybe more established brokerage, just on that sense of safety. Is that a false sense of security, or do you really do see differences in some of the more established players and the security controls relative to some of these startups? Well, there's definitely differences operationally for uh, organizations, trading houses and investment firms that have been in business for a long time. Um, you, you wouldn't have the ability to create uh, access to uh, a brand new bank account without uh, a tremendous amount of thorough oversight, as an example. You know, but um, it's, it, it's not necessarily misplaced uh, to, to think of the larger established houses as being more secure, but it's not necessarily because of technology. Um, it's that uh, those firms tend to have customers who have had long-term and long-time relationships with them. When we look at something like Robinhood, where it's a very temporal, in-the-moment relationship, and I don't even have a phone, uh, phone number to, to call into, um, I don't have the same type of, of longevity in being able to accumulate information to prove that you are who you say you are, which is where the investment uh, houses you know, would have the, the big advantage because they do have that type of relationship. Richard, of course, many of these people who were hacked had two-step authentication. How can one protect themselves in this current scenario? Well, I think right now the, the heavy focus uh, from a consumer standpoint is uh, playing defense, monitoring your accounts. You know, when we see the stories relative to people's experience with Robinhood, it was their own self-discovery. It wasn't Robinhood systems that helped them discover that there was a problem. They discovered there was a problem. Um, so being vigilant and monitoring until the rest of the world catches up with uh, this notion of being able to manage and, and, and empower you with your own identity uh, in the digital world in a way that you can manage it and have control over it, um, you know, being defensive and, and monitoring, keeping track of your investments and your transactions as closely as possible and turning on as many of the monitoring capabilities that a company even like Robinhood has that alerts you when a transaction is ex executed is definitely the best uh, strategy at the moment. Richard, I know your focus really has been on identity, but I am curious just if you can give us some comments broadly. When you get startups like this and some security breaches, you immediately want calls for more regulation. Do we need more consumer regulation, or is this really a problem that we can solve with stricter privacy rules? What do you see as a potential solution? Well, I, I think that there are a couple of different threads to pull there. I mean, first and foremost, having, having come from the banking industry myself, um, I don't know necessarily that additional regulation, compliance, uh, overhead requirements are the right thing. I think more accurate and more focused regulations are. The best example that I can give when we talk about privacy is, is that privacy uh, regulations are universal in one component that, that gets missed, which is it requires the companies to protect a customer's data but not protect the customer. <laughs> So until we get to a point where, and this is rapidly coming, there are a number of different uh, pieces of legislation uh, in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives today, the digital, uh, Improving Digital Identity Act and the Modernization of the Real ID Act, um, you know, until we focus these regulations on actually protecting the consumer, it's really difficult to call them consumer protection. Right? We can't just protect their data. We also need to protect them, and that requires a digital identity construct um, that currently doesn't exist, and that will change things immensely.